Hello everyone, this is Tiago from Coderversity and in today's video I'm going to be teaching you design patterns. You will learn why and how to apply design patterns. The five top most important design patterns for me to use. That is the single pa singleton pattern, the factory method pattern, the observer pattern, decorator pattern and finally the strategy pattern. And for that, we will use C-Sharp and .NET. So, what are we waiting for? Let's dive in. Let's start with the singleton pattern. This is one of the simplest design patterns, but also one of the most misunderstood. The singleton pattern ensures that a class has only one instance and provides a global access point to it. Imagine you're working on an application that needs to interact with a database. You don't, need, you don't want and don't need multiple instances of your database class floating around because that could cause all sorts of problems, like resource contention and memory issues. The singleton pattern ensures that the database class, for example, is only instantiated once and shared across the entire application. So, how does it work? The singleton pattern restricts the instantiation not to of a class to a single object. It also provides a global point of access. So whenever you need that instance, you just call a method that gives you the already created instance. Also, for thread safety, in multi-thread environments, you need to ensure that your singleton instance is created only once, even if multiple threads try to instantiate at the same time. That's where things like lock and double check locking come in. If you want to know more about multiple threads and asynchronous programming, check out my latest video. It will be in the description. So let's start with a practical example. Let's define here a database class. For that, we will use an instance that will be only available within the class. So for that, we use the private mo access modifier. So we do private static data database instance, then we do again a private static with only object that we'll, we will use for the lock, for the multi-threading concurrency. And then let's make a private constructor for, to prevent instantiation outside of the class. So let's add a comment here, private constructor to prevent instantiation. Okay. Now, how do we get this instance? Remember that we only want one instance per application. So we will add the public static database get instance that if the instance is not created already, so if instance equals no, which means it has no object instantiated, we will lock, we will use our object here created called lock to prevent multiple threading instantiation and, and concurrent access. So we will lock and check if instance equals null. We will create an instance. So, and then we just return the instance. So, in summary, this will only create an instance if the instance is not instantiated already. This is a singleton pattern. So, when do you use it? You can use the singleton pattern when you would need exactly one instance of a class to control system-wide behavior, like database connections, like I mentioned before, or logging or manage, managing configuration settings. What can go wrong in here? 
If you don't implement the singleton pattern and create multiple instances of your database class, for example, you could end up with inconsistencies in how your application interacts with the database. Imagine multiple components all making changes to the same data source but with different instances. This would lead to resource contention, memory leaks or even worse, corrupted data. And you don't want that, of course. Next up is the factory method pattern. This pattern is used to create objects without actually specifying the exact class of the object that will be created. Think about an application where you have different types of transport options, like a truck for lands and a ship for sea transport. Based on what you need, you want, an application, you want your application to instantiate the correct transport method, but without modifying your core logic every time you add a new transport type. That's where the fact factory method pattern shines. So, how does it work? In this pattern, you define an interface or, or abstract class for creating an object, but you allow subclasses to decide which class to instantiate. The factory method pattern is all about creating objects in a way that makes your code more flexible and easier to extend. Why is it useful? It decouples the client code from the actual instantiation of the objects. If you need to add new types of objects in the future, you don't have to change your client code, just the factory class. Let's implement an example. Let's implement the abstract class logistics in which since it's abstract, we can't instantiate because we only want the, the concrete inst instances. So, for example, the road logistics or the sea logistics. And for that, we will have a public abstract method that will return an object which implements the iTransport interface and is called trans create transport. Then, for a concrete class, let's create a public class, road logistics, that implements, that actually is a child of logistics. And since it's a public class, we will be able to instantiate. Then, we will override the i transport create transport method and we what do we use oops something went wrong here no not throw but we will public override uh sorry we will return new truck yeah and why do we use this because for the road logistics what we want to create as a transport is a truck, right? And now for the C logistics, it will be more or less the same logic, but this time the factory pattern will create an object for C that will be a chip, of course. So we will implement more or less the same logic and we will override the i transport create transport but instead of a truck for the c we will return a new ship and then let's implement the interface of course so public interface i transport that is a contract that will create in order to have the responsibility of the liver. Avoid, because it won't return anything. And then we create our instances that will be created with the factory method pattern. So we will create first the truck that, of course, implements the transport interface and we will have to write our deliver method 
and let's simulate it with a console.write line delivered by truck. And then, of course, you guessed it, the public class ship that will also implement the iTransport. And instead of delivering by truck, it will be delivered by ship. There we have our concrete classes. And there you go. Every time we need to create a transport, we, we either need the road or the sea, and the factory method will decide, based on our needs, what it will implement or create in this case, if it's the ship or if it's the truck. When to use it? The factory method pattern is ideal when the exact type of object is needed, uh, that is needed isn't known until runtime, or when you want to avoid coupling the client code to specific classes. What can go wrong? Without the factory method, you would have to write conditionals in your code to create truck or ship objects. Every time you, you add a new type of transport, like an airplane, you will have to modify your client code, which could introduce bugs. With the factory method, you just extend the factory to handle new transport types, keeping the client code, code clean. Now, let's talk about the observer pattern. This pattern is useful when you have one object that needs to notify other objects about the changes in its state. For example, let's say you have a store, and when a new product arrives, you want to notify all of your customers. Instead of manually keeping track of each customer and sending updates to them, the observer pattern lets you do this dynamically. How does it work? The observer pattern defines a one-to-many relationship between objects. When the state of one object changes, all its dependents, or observers, are automatically notified and updated. This pattern is widely used in event-driven systems and GUI applications. The advantages, the advantages of this pattern is that is, uh, it, its biggest advantages is decoupling. The subjects and the observers are loosely coupled, meaning you can easily add or remove observers without modifying the subject itself. Let's implement an example. We can start by creating an interface for the observer, which will have the responsibility of implementing the update. Then, let's implement our first concrete observer. That will be the customer that will observe all of the news of the store. So the customer implements an I observer and is characterized by its name. And as a constructor, It receives the name and will and will apply to its property. Then, of course, since we implement I observer, we have to write the code for our update. And receiving our message we will simulate that the user actually let's make use of the name that we implemented by string interpolation and let's make use of the name received notification that will be our message so let's say that the store updates the customers by saying this message that can be, for example, we now have the, the magazine that you were looking for. But for that, we also need to implement the store as well. And we will have an only 
a class only access list of all servers that we will notify that what will it be of course the customers and if we want to add a new recent client that just wants to be notified we have to do a method that allows us to introduce that observer to the list so we go to our customers list and we add our observer also we will have uh, to have a way to notify all of these customers like I said before so we will go through all the customers that we have as observers and we will update this will be our notification system and for that we need to implement our new arrival that is going to be used whenever a new ar arrival for example using the last example the magazines the the color of of the store will call this method that will be responsible for notifying all of our customers using the notify method that will have new item has just arrived in the store so you can use the observer pattern when one object needs to notify multiple objects of changes like in event systems graphic user interfaces or notifications what can what is a scenario when can go wrong if you don't use the observer pattern the, without the observer pattern you would have to manually notify each observer which could lead to tight coupling between objects Imagine a situation where you need to notify 50 customers, hard coding this would result in a mess. And very time consuming. The observer pattern makes this process dynamic and scalable. Next, we have the decorator pattern. This is, a, this is great for adding functionality to an object dynamically without altering its structure. Think of it like adding toppings to a pizza. You start with a basic pizza and then you add cheese, peppers or mushrooms based on what you need. In software, you might have a core object like a coffee order and you want to add options like milk, sugar or flavor shots at runtime. Instead of modifying the core objects, you use decorators to add this behavior. The decorator pattern involves wrapping an object with another object that adds additional responsibilities. Each decorator implements the same interface as the original object, which allows you to chain them together seamlessly. Why is it useful? The decorator pattern is useful when you need to add functionality in a flexible and scalable way. Instead of creating subclasses for every possible combination, you create a decorator class that can be composed. Let's code the example. We will need an interface for iCoffee and what can we do with coffee we can get in this case get the description and get the costs now let's add different types of concrete coffees for example a simple coffee here is a typo and then it implements, of course, our iCoffee interface. And since it implements the interface, as you already know, we will have to implement the methods of the interface. In this case, the get description that will return us a description that is a simple coffee. 
and then its costs. It will return us, let's say, 5.0. Now we will have an abstract class that will be our coffee decorator. which also implements the iCoffee, making mandatorily that we will have the description and the cost. Since it's an abstract, it's an abstract class and we want to, to have a concrete class instance in this abstract class, we'll have to make it protected in order to access from the child classes. So I coffee, coffee, and the coffee decorator that will always receive an instance that implements those two methods called coffee, and we will assign to our protected instance. Then we will have a public virtual string in order to be overridden by the child classes. Coffee dot get description, and then the same thing for the get cost. Get cost, and now. Let's add the decorators, the concrete decorators, as I mentioned. We can use a milk decorator that implements the coffee, coffee decorator and has a constructor for the milk decorator which receives a coffee that we will decorate with the milk. This will uh, go through the base class to send our coffee instance. And then we will override the virtual methods for the get description. In which we will simulate that we are adding something the, um, to the coffee. In this case, our code will be very simple and will be the get base description coffee plus with milk. And then we will of course have to add extra cost not string double, just double that is the coffee.getCost plus let's say 1.5 let's add another example for decorator we can add the sugar decorator which will be also a coffee decorator. will have its own constructor that will receive an instance of coffee that we will decorate. Is coffee. And then we will also Override the string get description get description that will be our coffee dot get description plus with sugar. cost override double 
get costs will be the coffee dot get cost plus 0 0.5 for example when should you use the decorator pattern use the decorator pattern when you want to add responsibilities to individual objects dynamically without affecting other objects to the same class if you don't use the decorator pattern you might end up creating subclasses for every combinations of features Imagine having a coffee shop where you need to manage different combinations of coffee with milk, sugar or both. Without decorators, you would have to create separate classes for every combination, which becomes unmanageable as options grow. The last pattern is strategy pattern. This pattern allows you to define a family of algorithms, encapsulate them and make them interchangeable. A good example of this is a file compression tool where you may want to choose between zip, rar or 7-zip compression algorithms. Instead of hard coding these algorithms into your class, you can use the strategy pattern to select which algorithm to use at runtime. How does it work? The strategy pattern defines a set of algorithms, encapsulates each one in separate class and makes them interchangeable. This means you can change the behavior of an object at runtime without modifying this code. It's especially useful when you have multiple ways of doing something and you want to be able to switch between them easily. The advantages are that the strategy pattern promotes code reusability and avoids the use of complex conditional inside the class. Instead of cluttering your code with if, else, or switch statements to choose algorithms, the pattern lets you pass in the desired behavior. Let's write an example, shall we? Let's start with the interface I compression strategy. We will use the same example that I mentioned before. So, of course, it will be the strategy of compressing and we'll receive the file path. Then we'll have to add the concrete classes. For example, the zip compression that will implement the I compression strategy and will make its own version of compress string file path and let's simulate the logic with a console.write line compression compressing file path using zip compression then We'll, we will do the same thing for the RAR compression. It has mandatorily to have a method to compress, that's why we are using the, the interface. And we'll implement it as we did in the zip. It will receive a file path. And it will simulate the logic for simplicity that we are compressing our file path using RAR compression. Then to compress, we will have to have a, a compressor, a concrete class. And this will receive, will not know uh, before runtime which strategy it will run. So we will have a private I compression strategy that we will call compression strategy. And the constructor to create the instances that will receive the compression strategy that we will assign to our private instance equals to compression strategy and then of course the act of compress file we will see the 
the file path and it will dynamically decide based on, for example, dependency injection, which compression strategy we want to use. And according to your needs, it can go to a RAR compression or to a zip compression. You can use the strategy pattern when you want to switch between different algorithms dynamically, like sorting methods, file compression techniques like we just did, or payment gateways in an e-commerce platform, for example. Without the strategy pattern, you, you would likely use a lot of if-else statements to choose the right algorithm, leading to bloated and hard to maintain code. By using the strategy pattern, you separate the logic for each algorithm and keep your main class clean. And with this, we have our top five design patterns covered. The singleton pattern that is used for global single instance objects, the factory method pattern for flexible object creation, the observer pattern for dynamic event handling, the decorator pattern for dynamic behavior modification, and the strategy pattern for interchangeable algorithms. I encourage you to like, comment and subscribe and try to apply these patterns in your own projects. And that wraps up our tutorial. I hope you found these projects helpful and that you learned something new along the way. If you followed along, congratulations on completing the project. Don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and consider subscribing to the channel for more programming tutorials and projects. If you have any questions, suggestions, or just want to share your own version of the project, drop a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching and happy coding! See you in the next video!